want to welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We're recording. We'll send this out to everyone. Um, but we started collecting. And thank you if, if you're one of the uh, people who filled out the survey. Um, it was a big survey. We got a lot of people responded. And to our knowledge, I think this is the biggest giving church giving survey like going, especially with the underlying data. Yeah, the real the real data. Um, I mean, I'll just jump right. Twenty twenty three state of church giving. We make sure I can advance here. Um, so we serve a lot of churches, and we kind of this is kind of a two part. You're going to get data from two two kind of major sources. One source is just the Tithely product, right? And all of the churches we serve, um, it's over thirty five thousand churches. Uh, around the world. So there's a lot of giving data. Um, it definitely skews US, right? So there's a large portion of our customers are in the US, but, you know, Australia, Canada are heavily represented, uh, as well as a number of other countries. Um, so, you know, over 35,000 churches, billions of dollars given on the platform. Uh, you can see here 10 million plus transactions or gifts, donations to churches, um, over a million donors, a million churchgoers that have given on the platform. Um, and then on top of just the, the kind of first party data on our platform, we also just did a survey where we kind of asked a series of questions and we got about 6,000 churches that responded. And, and most of those would be, you know, staff, church staff, but those some volunteers and things like that as well in there. Um, but, you know, 6,000 churches that answered a series of questions. So you're getting kind of a combo of data sets from those two things. Um, so it's a, uh, yeah, it's a pretty massive study i guess and we've we've pared it down this isn't covering all of it it's covering some of the highlights today good stuff let's let's dive in here all right i'll uh we're just going to go back and forth so who did we survey so the survey component where we asked some questions to about six thousand churches um predominantly you can see right you know four and a half percent were large churches but the majority of the churches that answered were small to mid-sized churches uh, and and really, that's kind of the that is the church, right? Most churches, especially in America, are you know under they're kind of 120 or less, right? So it's a small. Most churches are just small, right? So the representation in this survey was mostly small to mid-sized churches. So probably the 500 member and under type of churches is going to be what filled out this survey mostly. Um, and that also is similar to like kind of our customer base, right? Most of serving 35,000 churches, most churches are going to be kind of that mid-sized to small size church. Mm -hmm. So you can look at this data and think this applies to, to you, right? Like these averages and all this data we got, it's it's going to look very much like your church, which mm -hmm. you know, is what we wanted. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Um. And then this one, just, you know, kind of looking at annual budgets. So, right, like what's the size of the church? Annual budget's kind of a good way to look at it. Um, and you can see right here, like over 60% of all churches surveyed operate for under 260 grand a year, right? So you just take that kind of midpoint, you see the box around there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's a bunch of small churches under $50,000 budgets, the 50 to 100K budget. I mean, that's 30% right there. And then you kind of have that hundred to 250 budget um, being another 30. So you got 60% operating under, you know, annual budgets under 250 grand. And, and then there's some big ones in there too. Yeah. And as you'll see later, like a typical rule of thumb, you know, on like, we can, we can tell really, I can tell really quick, like how big a church is based on the budget. So it's a it, rule of thumb, depending on the, zip code and the dem the demographics of your area is like a thousand dollars per person per year is the average and you'll see that in a minute so these these the 60 percent here 250 and under which is uh like we said that's the church in america you know yeah yeah, yeah. so hopefully that just gives you a sense of the the kind of data feeding into both the survey and the the hard data on our system the first party data on the tie the platform um so now we'll jump in. This is this data. This part of the data is comes directly from Tidely. So one of the questions that we always we either get or it comes up in conversation is just you know how is online giving or how is giving doing after COVID, right? Or how did COVID variations of that question? How did COVID impact giving? How's it performing now? 
what's church giving look like? So we tried to pull some data off of the platform and just to orient you to the data, this, this view is quarterly. So you're looking at quarterly trends going back to Q3 2015. So it's kind of a long view. Um, and you can see this is this is data around the donors or the church goers giving. Um, right. So you, top left, it might be a little hard to see, but this is average number of gifts per giver in the period. So in the quarter. Right. So you can see, you know, for a long time, if you look way over here to the left top chart on the left, you know, it's about two gifts per giver across our platform. Right. Again, you kind of have to put yourself in the perspective of Tithe serving 35,000 churches millions of donors, tens of millions of transactions or gifts on the platform. So this is averaging it out across the whole whole platform. So you see for a long time, it's right around two, it kind of stays, it bounces around a little bit, but then COVID hits Q1 2020, and you get a lot more people giving um, for the first time digitally kind of drops. And then it spikes way up because mm -hmm. everybody went online, right? right? And boom, it spikes way up. And then it kind of you can see it spikes up, it gets all the way up to almost 2.3 and it kind of trails off a little bit, but not much. I mean, this is 2.27 down to 2.2. Um, so it's not like a, a major swing, but when you're talking about millions of donors, that that adds up, right? Um, so I don't, Dean, you want to throw anything in on that one? It's just interesting, like in Q1 of 2020, like the, lo the lockdown was like March the 15th, right? right. So yeah. it just... We were all like, people were afraid. We didn't know what was going on. What's this disease, you know, COVID, and we were just learning it. So everyone shrunk back, like, oh, hang on a minute. This is real. And then um, once, you know, we started getting through the pandemic and we we alone onboarded 12,000 customers in six weeks from the middle of March to the end of April yep. in, that, in that year, in that period. And so obviously you know, a lot of giving went online and stayed online. And of course, we, we've seen that. Um, yeah. It's always interesting to me. So this is an average of two gifts through the quarter. So that's 12 Sundays, give or take. And the average time people are giving is twice. And like we, we talk a lot about 135 billion a year given to churches and on and on. But, you know, one of our kind of not so stated missions is to increase generosity across the body of Christ. It's like, you know, there is billions of dollars that are not given because pastors either don't teach and talk biblically about money and economics. Uh, and it's just because, you know, giving comes out of a revelation of God's my provider and I'm going to trust him with this really important part of my life, my money. And so it's just always fascinating to see you look at the average you know, gift per giver in the quarter, like 330 bucks. There it is. That's like 1200 bucks a year. So there's, you know, that thousand to 1200 per person that, that's proved out in, in this data. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's interesting here um, is like post COVID you saw like the, the amount of gifts happening, you know, per giver has definitely increased. Right. So you come out of COVID and you go, yep, it's definitely up and it's staying up there. It's coming back a little bit, but it's staying up there. So more, more people are giving more often digitally. Um, and also you'll see like this chart is the average dollars given per giver. So how much, right? This is, I think the it's, we made the chart bigger because I think it represents what's happening. So giving digitally has consistently grown. It's not a ton, but if you come back here and you're in that 260, 250, 260, now it's, you know, up in that 300 plus, you know, years later. So COVID's had an impact, but digital giving continues to grow and average gift size continues to grow. Um, so what we've seen, I guess, is just like COVID made digital giving go way up. It's come back a little bit, but overall it continues to kind of trend up. Um, and it seems to be that's the sentiment, you know, across our customer base at least, right? Which is a decent representation with 35,000 churches. Right. The other thing to notice here is is December giving is is always higher, both in the right. average size and per, per person. So if you're not focused on end of year giving, like we've done, I think we've done webinars on it, and we we've certainly produced blogs and and you know content around end of year giving focus. Right. And like an email campaign and a specific. So you're 
if you're not doing that, you're missing out because people are going to give at the end of the year. In the US, we get a tax deduction that largely drives that. But it's a real thing and you should always be focused. Like obviously it's Christmas and you're focused on that. Um, but that last week of the year, we see giving go off the chart. And uh, it's it's always good to have some kind of appeal and messaging around, you know, generosity at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and this is another view, but this is from the perspective of the church. The first set of slides is from the perspective of the donor or the giver. This is through the church, right? So you can see on the left, average number of gifts per church. So again, going way back to 2015, number of digital gifts happening you know, by quarter to our churches, right? You can see it just slowly kind of increases. It goes way up in Q2 of 20 because you know everyone, they shrunk in Q1 because everyone was worried. Somehow everyone got, you know, online and churches went online and went way up and then it kind of normalized, but it's still slowly climbing. Um, so it kind of, you know, more people are giving digitally to churches. Like it's just, that is the facts of what we're seeing across our platform. Um, and you can also see on the right, average dollars given to church digitally by quarter, right? So trying to make sure that's really clear, but you can just see the trend over time. Here's COVID again, it dips pretty significantly, then it jumps up. And then you can see to Dean's point, the, the Decembers are the spikes, but this trend line right in here is still kind of going up into the right. So dollar, like number of people giving to churches digitally and dollars given to churches digitally kind of continues to rise. Um, but we also know there's still a lot of cash and check giving that happens out there. This is just showing you the digital part of the landscape. Well, and we know that probably 50, 60 percent is still cash and check because we, you know, depending on what product you're using, you you'll we capture the digital automatically and yep. put it in, in, in the back end for you. And but also we have customers that record cash and check. Right. So we have that data as well inside of Alvanto and Breeze. And so, you know, we know what's digital yep. and we know. Check 50, 60, still cash and check, believe it or not. Yeah, slowly over time. Slowly over time, that's going to go away. Yeah, yeah. Um, so jumping into some other parts of the data. Again, this is tithely data, you know, first party, right from churches. Um, over 50% of all donations given to churches are under $100. And you guys, pro you know, you guys are watching this probably going, yeah, you, you know, you see this, these, these things are probably happening for you in your church. Hopefully this gives you a broader perspective across a lot of churches. Um, so, you know, most half of transactions, half of gifts are under a hundred dollars and those that half only accounts for about 12% of total dollars given. So you can kind of see over here, bottom left chart, um, you know, 60% give or take or 50, you know, a little over 50% um, by gift size under a hundred dollars. And then over on the top, right, this is the value or the dollars given, right? So you can see, you know, a lot of the dollars given, although there's a lot less gifts happening there, 60% um, of total dollars given come from just 15% of the donations. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, you know, it, it kind of makes sense, um, but it's interesting to look at the data this way. You know what this tells me kind of with my ministry hat on, it's the amount of people that actually have that revelation of the tithe. Now, like some, the word tithe is controversial in church. Some people don't think the 10% applies in the New Testament. Beyond that argument, and no need to have that here. But just the concept of generosity, okay? Let's just, let's just pick 10% as a number. Um, it's like, that's why it's so important to teach what the Bible says about stewardship and generosity, because it's not natural to give, you know, 5, 10, 20% of your income away. And it only comes when people understand what and, and get by revelation what the Bible teaches. And, uh, you know, my bottom line is the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So God institutes a plan for us to be generous with our wealth and give, give it away um, to basically help us get set free from the traps of money. And that obviously how, you know, the church is funded and ministries are funded, but it's like, having people get that revelation is only going to happen if you're a church leader and you teach on it. Right. And so, uh, that's, that's what this tells me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's good for, I think church leaders to know this data, right. It doesn't, to me, I don't think the way to read this is to say, Oh, like 
look, there's 50% of our, our, you know, givers are giving a small amount. So I'm going to go focus on those that give more. I don't think that's the read, but it is good to be educated about it and know that this is kind of the, this is what the data tells you. And, you know, it might mean that you do some things in your, some churches have like stewardship programs. They have people in the church that focus on giving and generosity, um, not just from a teaching perspective, but also from a, you know, pastoral care and cultivation, kind of like other forms of doing that. So you tend to, you know, focus on your larger givers um, to try to help them fund the mission of your church, right? So you're trying to pull them in. And Dean, you did a lot of this, right? In your pastor days. But I think understanding these things and knowing who are the givers, who are the bigger givers, um, it, maybe not the senior pastor, because some churches operate differently, but maybe there's somebody else on the staff that knows who they are and can kind of, um, you know, pull them into some of the work that your church is doing to try to see if they want to get, you know, more involved. Um, so totally. Good. This isn't a webinar of how to raise money, but right. like, but while we're here, you know, if you're a senior leader and you don't know your business people, you're, you're making a big mistake. You should be right. having breakfast, you know, at least once a quarter monthly with your key business owners. Um, and, and the other exercise that I always like to do for a church is take my membership, like how many families I have, times that by the average family income in the county or the zip code, which you can find online, multiply it. So I have 250 members and the average income in my county is 75 grand, right? Mm -hmm. Per household. That's the total GDP of your church. So put your giving against that number and you're going to be at a, between one and 2%. Right. So that's like the possibility of teaching about generosity. I have 250 members times $75,000 per household. That's the GDP of the church. And then, you know, teaching about generosity is kind of the number. Great churches get over 5%. Yeah. Of giving, like yeah. 5% of that GDP. Yeah. So I mean, cool. that's fascinating. And that even the, the last kind of data point, I mean, 5% of gifts given account for 40% of the dollars. Right. Right. So very oh. small number of, you know, giving families like yep. represent a decent chunk, right. Of church budgets. If you go back to the budget slide, right. So, you know, it's important data, data to know. And I would encourage you guys watching to go try to figure this out for your church um, to understand it more. So let's keep, keep rolling. Another one we get all the time, right. Summer slump. We know churches in America, especially, uh, you know, summer hits, and people are on vacation, people are barbecuing, there's family visiting, there's just all kinds of stuff happening. And mm -hmm. commonly you hear this phrase, the summer slump, because giving is going to dip in the summer. So we try to study that on our platform and we look at giving by month, we look at giving by day, we look at giving by hour, um, just to kind of see what's happening in the trends. Uh, but you know, when churches are on the tithe platform, you can see percentage of gifts given by month does not dip significantly in June, July, August. Um, so because of digital giving, the summer slump really doesn't exist for, again, Tithely customers. This is real data from the Tithely platform. Um, so it doesn't, you know, nothing really changes. In the next slide, say, we'll stay on the topic and then Dean, you can jump in. But this is the dollars, right? This is the value of those gifts. So the percentage of giving doesn't, from number of transactions or number of gifts doesn't change much and the value doesn't change much. It maybe is down just a little teeny bit from kind of the first half of the year, but not by much. Um, when you add recurring and mobile, it just keeps working. And that's, that's the point, right? The whole reason that, you know, Frank and I started this company was to like defeat the summer slump was one of the big things. You know, I, I just knew from personal experience that it was really tough. Yeah. And, those well, you, yeah, you saw it. Like you lived, you know. I lived it. Give I us an Atlanta it. story. <laughs> yeah, like it'd be ninety-five degrees and people just like going to the lake. That's what they're doing. They're coming to church, especially in some years when my air conditioning broke down in the church. Like we're going to the lake. Um, so, but his th this is fixed essentially. It's, it's it's a little, but it's recurring and give anywhere, anytime. Those two things solve this problem. And yeah, that's the whole kind of basis for. The, the beginning of tidally anyway. Yeah. 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 You don't have to be in church to give. 
That's, right. that's not an argument. I don't want anyone to ever hear that as like, we don't want people in church. We do, right? It's very important being yeah. with the body. But we all also know that people don't show up at church every single weekend. People miss. And, mm-hmm. and also there's people like me who remembering the checkbook, you know, when I'm trying to get the family of five out the door, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, it was going to get forgotten at times, you know, or, or we'd be looking for it in a, in a frenzy because we didn't know where we left it last. Cause we didn't use it right for the last week. But you um, never forgot your phone. The phone's always in your pocket. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it is, it is about, you know, people can give when they're not in church also they can set up recurring giving but it's also that their phone is always on them and they can always give even when they're in service and forgot their checkbook right so it's just a more convenient way to do all of it yeah absolutely um next one we looked at is giving by day of week right so giving is is pretty steady when you look at the monthly data we just showed you um but the weekly if you look day by day during the week uh, you actually will see it, you know, there is a pretty big um, difference, especially Fridays and Sundays. Uh, but I think the big point here that we like to call out is, you know, 70% of dollars given happens Monday to Saturday, mm-hmm. right? You got 30 some odd percent of the dollars given happens on Sunday. So Sunday is a really big day for giving, obviously. But when you have mobile and online, you're going to get way more of your giving happening, you know, Monday through Sunday or Monday through Saturday because people can give anytime, anywhere. And the data shows that really, really clearly. Friday and Sunday are big, but every other day there's giving happening, you know, eight, 10 percent every single day. I mean, a good exercise if you, you know, for you to go and look at your data and see how much of your, you know, revenue um, comes in on Sunday as opposed to the rest of the week. And if, if you're if you're 90 plus percent on a Sunday, that's not good. I, I describe the business of church, and we know church is not a business, but the business side of church as an as a once a week 90 minute business. You got one service on a Sunday, and that's your chance to reach your community. That's the old school way. Now, with apps and you know, all the stuff we do digitally and all the technology we we serve our customers with, you can take church 24-7. Yeah. And we know there's small groups and like that, right? We know that that's not. Church is not a 90 minute thing to Dean's point, but from a giving perspective for ages, cash and check in the plate is how it happened. And so you had 90 minutes to collect for most churches, right? Like like your average church in America, hundred people taking up the offering. That was when it happened. Um, And it's, it's changing. Yeah. And COVID, I mean, this isn't even the kind of, bring in the COVID effect to church attendance, right? Like, I mean, I think that's had a pretty major effect with people show up in the building and now they're watching church online. So attendance is shifting. Attendance patterns are shifting for churches. Um, But when you have great digital tools and there's lots of digital tools, we, you know, focus heavily on the giving side here. People are going to give every day of the week. Absolutely. It's a great, great thing. Um, Okay, recurring giving is a big deal, right? And um, in church, right, recurring giving kind of would happen because people were giving consistently every week in the plate. So there's kind of like a recurring giving already or reoccurring giving happening. Um, But with the introduction of mobile, like people can set it up just like they'd set up, you know, paying your mortgage or paying other bills. You can set it up to happen automatically. Um, And we think there's massive benefit to that, right? Having the mobile app, you set up your gift, you want to give weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, you set it all up, it happens automatically. And it's really helpful for church income, right? Like we like to tell people like it helps stabilize income and make it more predictable because it's you, you can see that it's set up. So if you know 40% of your budget is coming in from automated recurring giving, that gives you a lot of confidence or a lot more confidence in your budgeting. So Right here, because churches using Tidely C over uh, our churches using Tidely C over 37% of donations coming from recurring giving. So almost 40% happening recurring is is a pretty powerful thing. Um, yeah, jump in there. That, I mean, that's the summer slump explained, right? So you see normalized giving, that's because of recurring giving. Um, and it's it's probably the number one growth lever for giving is people setting up recurring. Because 
we want everyone to be in church every Sunday. We, we know they're not. Right. And if they're not got set up on digital recurring, very rarely are they going to come the following week and give double. It just doesn't right. happen. So that's the single thing. And like, oh, how do we, like, look at your recurring giving. If you're at, and on our dashboard, you can see it. If you're at under 10%, like, you, you and like, oh, how do I do that? It's like, you got to talk about it. You got to approach your leaders first. Go get the key people in your church on recurring that love your vision, that are sold out, get them on recurring. Next tier down to volunteers. You're at a leaders meeting. You're, you know, rallying the troops. You want to talk about getting those people on recurring and then mentioning it from the pulpit, you know, at least once a month is yeah. going to get, we have churches 60, 70% recurring. Like that's the gold standard. If you can get over 50%, you, you're mm -hmm. crushing, so, but you've got to talk about it. Yeah. And, and when we ran the survey, the chart on the bottom is just the survey data, right? Asking churches. Um, and these are churches both on tithely and not on tithely. So it's 6,000 plus churches of all kinds. Um, but you'll see, I mean, 40%, you know, you can add the kind of first top two buckets. I mean, 64, 65% have under 40% of recurring giving and 40% of that is under 20% recurring giving, right? So, um, you know, a lot of churches, probably most churches, um, if I was, you know, making a guess, have a really low percentage of automated recurring giving. Mm -hmm. But when you introduce a platform, uh, that's, you know, really good at this and built around this, you know, you can get upwards of 40% and, and way better, right? This is kind of the average across our whole platform. Um, and like we said, it, it helps with the church budget. It helps, it helps people. Cause a lot of times like people want to give, but you forget the checkbook or you're not in church. And it's not that you don't want to give you right. just, the opportunity isn't there because of, you know, stuff. Right. But if you make it easy for me, I'm in that bucket. Like you make it, you give me the the tech to do it, make it easy. Like I'm all in, right? And haven't missed a gift in years because of it. <laughs> so it's a great thing. And I bet you lots of people in your church uh, would love that option too. So we'll keep jamming. Um, digital giving is gaining momentum on cash and check. Uh, this is kind of from survey data, right? This is the 6,000. We actually did this survey back in 2019 as well. So we show some comparisons, but you know, donors give with cash and checks, still 52% based on the survey, 52% of giving is still happening via cash and check. Um, but online giving and mobile giving, if you lump those together, are definitely growing, right? Donors giving online, 18, 19% in 2019, up to 32%, 31.8. Um, mobile up, you know, a percentage point or so. So mobile and on online growing quite a bit and gaining on... Um, cash and check. I mean, if you add those two together, that's what 40 something percent uh, is happening, you know, digital and 50 something percent is happening cash and check still. So mm -hmm. it's gaining, but cash and check is still out there. Yeah. Think about the last time you put gas in your car and didn't use a, a credit or debit card, like probably never. Yeah. I, it, that's, that, that's, that's, like people are like in the early days when we started, Frank, talking to, you know, churches, they're like, oh, credit cards are evil and we're not going to take credit cards. It's like it, literally every single other thing, time that people spend money, they're using the credit debit card. So yeah. um, obviously we're well, talking about responsibility, you know, responsibly using a credit card and and we're Dave Ramsey fans and like we love debit cards and all that good stuff, but it, it's just where it's all headed. And now since right. we started like putting credit debit cards inside of digital wallets in apps is like everyone's doing it. So yeah, I mean, know. COVID, we, we pulled some data. This will be in there. Um, you guys can read through it, but it, you know, the data around cash and check versus cards, whether that's a credit card or a debit card, right. Tied to your bank account, ACH, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, it's just digital forms of paying for everyday things is, is going through the roof and it's everything's pointing that way and cash and check is slowly declining and has declined probably pretty significantly post COVID. So you can read up on all of this. Um, and, and all of that behavior exists in everybody, everybody's day-to-day -day lives. Why wouldn't it exist in the church, right? Like people are going to want that convenience. They're going to want to use their credit card or debit card. Um, it's just how people kind of do life. Yep. Exactly. Um, okay. I see Caroline has a yeah, question. We have a good question in the chat. Um, Great. 
Do we see that the giving method data differs based on age? Like the way that people are giving, does that? That is a great, we should, okay, that's a great question. We do yep. not have a, a data-driven answer to that question because we don't ask for age, right? In, in terms of giving on Tithely, we don't know your age. We don't actually track that. Or we, we, may, we may know that because of other things. We do the CRM, the church management side of things too, so we could, but we don't, um, when you're giving and just using the giving product, we don't ask for age. Uh, but we should put that, that's a great idea. We should put that yeah. in our next survey, you know, kind of age yeah. data, demographic data tied to payment preference, you know? Um, I give you an anecdotal answer, which is my son's church here in LA. Jake is 35, I think. And we attend his church with earplugs in, sitting in the back because we're the oldest. <laughs> so his average church age is like, I think late twenties, and their church is well above eighty percent digital. It may be over ninety now. So anecdotally, it would make sense if your church skews younger. Yeah, it's going to be much higher. And if it skews older, that's where you're going to be in that. You know, like not a knock on old people. Like <laughs> us fifty pluses all love digital tools, right? So it's not like, but it does skew a little bit more traditional in giving if it's 50 plus certainly if it's you know 40 and under it's going to skew pretty high digitally right yeah it's a good question we're going to add that to the next survey yeah. thank you um and we'll we'll try to keep it moving here um th this data might be a little bit old but we like to call it out because for a long time right churches just weren't offering online giving and it's grown over the years i think post covid if we did this uh, you know, our, our friends at Dunham and Company, if they did this again, that number's probably gone up. Um, but there's still a lot of churches that don't offer online or a digital form of giving. We mm -hmm. see it even today. People will sign up for Tithely and they will tell us why they signed up and it will be because of COVID. <laughs> and I think we're two to three years beyond COVID at this point, at least the start of it, you know, when it all started. Um, yeah. And people will sign up and not have online giving. Um, right. Or... They had a, a young family come to the church for the first time and wanted to give and asked if they could give with a debit credit. And so right. they, they went on the web. We get hundreds of churches like this a month still come to us every month. And like, oh, we need digital giving because we've got members that don't have checkbooks. And yeah. I'm like, you know, and we just and we love it. Right. We get them all stitched up and they're rocking and rolling. And that's that's often how it, it, you are kind of prodded to do it. You have people that are are not going to give any other way than right. the debit. Right, right. Um, but here's one of the number one, Dean brought up a, a big one, right? Giving with cards, or credit cards, right? And kind of the implications there, possible implications. But one of the big things that we've heard over the years, this has changed a bit, but, you know, number one reason we hear churches don't want to use online giving is because of the fees, right? When you're using cash and check and you're passing the plate and volunteers are helping you or staff are helping you process all of that, the the fees don't exist right it's zero zero dollars in terms of hard costs you have costs you have time the people and time and resources there are there are you know soft costs there i guess labor costs or volunteer costs uh, but when it comes to online giving there's fees right tidally we we have fees we charge for the products we build and the services we provide um <clears throat> but one of the things that we have in our product is the option for the donor to cover the fees, right? Now we don't we don't force it on. Um, we let you decide whether or not you want this to be turned on by default or turned off or always on and kind of automatically collected. Like that's up to our churches to choose. Um, but we see almost 40% of transactions that come in will have the fees covered. So mm -hmm. that's without you know major promotion. That's not being forced to do it. This is kind of optionally turning it on um you know people giving to their church are generous like and, and they're like yeah i'll help the church out and cover the fees um and we see again almost up to 40 percent. and we have some churches that promote it that right. will do, do the on. you just like you know you can just turn it on like in the in the form um so frank barry invented cover the fees everyone needs to know that <laughs> we were one of the first to do it i still remember it was like five years ago like we're, yeah we're, we did it way back yeah I think we were the first to do it. And Frank says, I've got this idea. Like, we can just put the fee in the donation and cover the fees. And 
it was really remember we had, took ages for us to work out how to calculate it all right yeah we were, totally so, anyway so frank invented it this is so you think about 2.9 percent plus 30 cents cents our standard transaction pretty industry standard across the board you can get the use of all of this software right when you promote cover the fees and you're paying under two percent and giving we know goes up five ten fifteen percent once you start using digital properly so it, it's it's a, a little cost for a massive gain and uh and it's it's our, one of our most beloved features so yeah and look churches are getting more donors are getting more accustomed to this because you see it in other places too you might see it when you're going out to dinner you might see it on your coffee you know when you're paying at the square kiosk like you see it in lots of places nowadays right it's popping up more and more um it might be called different things convenience fee Right. whatever right there's different phrases but um you know when you mention it to your church and you can do it you know super heavy like overtly or you can be more kind of casual and put it in a newsletter or whatever but when you mention it to your church you're going to be surprised and see lots of people that are very willing to cover the fees um so anyways that that was one of the main reasons but we've seen that kind of change over the years um so quick quick recap Digital giving happens every day of the week, you know, lots and lots of giving, giving happens Monday through Saturday. Um, digital giving equals more recurring, right? So you get more automated recurring, making the budget more consistent and helps you kind of better predict and forecast where you're headed into the future. Um, and churches that educate on digital giving, you know, they see an increase. This is a study that, that we didn't do, um, but when the study was done, they saw that digital giving increased overall giving by over 30%. Um, so I think that if you have the right tools, you talk about it a lot, you educate your church on it, giving is going to go up because people can give anytime, anywhere. Uh, and the data that, you know, that hopefully that we're presenting to you helps to kind of prove that out. Um, I'm rushing through a few of these. We were going to hit six best practices. Dean, we should probably hit these really fast. Yep. All right, let's go. Um, oh. I'll, let, I'll let you hit them. Yeah, um, obviously web and app, key, like key gateways, doorways into, into digital giving. Yeah. You want that form really simple and basic and fast and just working for you on those uh, devices. Like put it on your website. Don't forget, like oh, we're at the main point. This is very, very simple best practices. Put online giving on your website, make it findable right. from the homepage so and that people top can. Top right is a good spot for the give button. That's right. We encourage top right. Text, obviously, it's been around for a long time. We pioneered text giving. Probably still the easiest way to give. Once you got the church text giving, you know, number saved in your phone, it's literally you call it church text giving as, as a name, and you look mm -hmm. over it up, put an amount, press in, and it's kaboom. It's and, and share about it, right? Like, get it on your website and then educate your church. So share, right? Have the slides up on the weekend when you're having the giving moment. Use the videos. Use the resources we provide create your own resources, but share things often about how people can give online, whether it's from your website or a mobile app. Um, I think put it just, in just a new launch kit, right? I think um, a whole brand new kind of kit that we've done for uh, for everybody is downloadable. Um, yeah, you can go grab it. Just go to get.tithe.ly. The, the kind of, if you're looking at the screen right now, bottom right corner, but get.tithe.ly forward slash launch. And we've got a bunch of resources that you guys can use and you can, uh, you can edit them and, you know, make them branded for you guys and all that. But we try to provide those to churches um, just to keep, keep promoting. Number three, add it to your, yeah, add it to your, everyone's probably live streaming or, or recording and then posting it on YouTube or Facebook or some version of this, but make sure you add it, like have the lower thirds mm -hmm. so that people watching your service can see, and it can be, as simple as a QR code nowadays, right? Like have a QR code in your lower thirds, let people take a picture. They're at home watching on the TV. They snap the picture, goes to your online giving form, make it, make it super easy. Um, but don't forget that moment. When COVID hit, we, we got into our site's product, our website product for churches and made sure we plumbed up a bunch of stuff for live stream and, and having the giving button right in there um, was one of the, Things we did straight away when when the yeah. pandemic hit, but it's it's here forever now. So um, if you need a great church website, um, head on over to Tidely Sites. You'll love 
all that stuff, communication, communication, communication. If you're not talking about it and uh, and letting people know, weekly newsletter, like by text, like all the ways that you communicate to your church, um, you must communicate uh, when it comes to this this topic. Yeah, and not just once. You got to. Yeah. It's got to be a consistent part of your. You know, you got church leaders are the best communicators in the world for the most part. So you guys know this, you know, you have to communicate things. You got to do it often. If you want people to get to VBS, you better tell the parents like 20 times and yep. it better be in the announcements and all the things you guys already know. Um, it's the same with online giving. Focus on recurring. Like we said, that's, you know, we, we no need to belabor the point, but we'll just say it one more time. Focus on recurring. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, this one's obvious too. Like don't skip the giving moment, you know, like, every church does it different um but have a have at least a moment where you mention online giving whether it's a full giving moment where you take a few minutes and you talk about the reasons why we give and right you're kind of using the scripture and teaching on generosity um or at minimum it's in your announcements and you're you know talking about it and making sure people know where to go but we encourage you not to skip the giving moment i mean i i would just add it's a great moment to pray for for your congregation for god's blessing for you know so it's like hey we're going to receive an offering you you may use a scripture you may use a story or whatever um but certainly it's a, it's a moment that's prayerfully and and the it's changed now right so the plate's not going and people aren't putting money in so it's like hey just let's all pray and hold your phone because a lot of you gave digitally today and so let's just kind of think about it and pray yeah. over this and make it a spiritual moment because it is totally and that's a wrap. That's uh, not all the data, but that's a lot of the data and some of the highlights. Um, you guys can all grab the report. Just scan the QR code. This is our giving moment. Just scan the QR code. You can uh, <laughs> you can grab the PDF of the report um, and we'll send out the slides. We usually get that question. We'll send the slides so you guys have these um, and you can go to stateofgivingsurvey.com as well. So lots of ways to go grab it. Love it. Hey, we enjoyed it. Great seeing you guys and uh, stand by. There's much more information coming. We've got a next event coming up in June. So always good stuff happening here at Tidely. We love you guys. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate you guys. And uh, grab grab the report. Send us any questions. We'll try to follow up with you guys. And uh, it's great having you. Thanks for jumping on the webinar today.